Hi, hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, in today's video, um, I'll be teaching you guys how to build a project which is structured in a clean architecture way, right? So, uh, this tutorial is not going to be specifically about the project to be structured, but it's just going to give you an idea of how to structure your project when you want to think in terms of um, clean architecture or clean code. So, um, the example project to be working on is just going to be a to-do app but it's going to um, be what you'll be doing for most big projects so e-commerce um, charting app whatever project you are going to work on this is going to be the foundation for that kind of project right so let's get into it and then um, start working on it also there is not going to be a ui tutorial right so you won't see me um, preview my phone or my emulator i'm just going to explain the concept so that you know how to go about um, working with a clean architecture in a project so first i have created a new um, flutter app right and in the lib folder i just have uh, my main dot that file which is um, a stateless widget that's i'm running my app and i don't even have a home in the material app right so the first thing you want to do is to look at the project you are building right so if it's an e-commerce um let's say charting app delivery system whatever project you are working on you have to analyze the project and bring out the features of that project so for instance if you are working on an e-commerce um project right some of the features may be um the cart system right uh, maybe the users may be able to sign in so we have the profile picture sorry the profile feature right um, we may also have the transaction feature right payments those, those are the features of an e-commerce app right um, when you talk of features I want to throw more light on this when you talk of features they are not crowd operations right so for instance um, adding products to cart it's not a feature on its own but the cat system is the whole feature right so in our case for instance we we'll work on a to-do app um creating to do editing to do deleting to do they are not features the to-do system is the feature so in our case our app is going to have just one feature right so see feature as um a portion of your app that contains card operations that is creating reading updating operations basically right so you may have a feature like let's say um follow right or something like maybe um like right or it doesn't really matter you may have a feature all that you have to know is that um that feature is a chunk or something that your app does right so let's start with the to-do app so Normally, when you are starting a clean architecture project, there are other things that will be your lab folder, like um, your network, uh, that's for checking network connectivity. You have something we call um, use cases. You may have um, other other stuff right in your um, lab folder. But in this case, we are just going to focus on the core concept. So within the lab folder, um, you may have another folder, another directory, which the name doesn't really matter some people call it slc others call it features um, and some are even specific so they divide it into core and then slc it doesn't really matter how you name this folder what matters is what is within the folder so in this case in the lib folder i'm going to create another sub folder called features and let's assume uh, my to-do app wasn't just a simple to-do app it was very complex to do app that has authentication system right so that would be another feature um that had the to do um so how do you call feature and it also had this kind of follow like this kind of social media stuff features as well you get it so in our case we just have the to do um, feature we doesn't have anything like profile or whatever it's just a to do simple to do app so we have just one feature right and that feature is the to do app so or let's say the to do feature so i call it to do now within the to do uh, we are going to have some sub folders this folder will depend on 
what the future is meant to do right so if you watch my previous video where i talked about clean architecture um you should understand this very well and if you haven't watched it i'll leave a link in the description so that you check it out so in the to do um feature we're going to have basically three sub folders right or directories and the first one is going to be domain um data and then presentation okay so these are going to be um the three sub folders within the to do feature and these three folders will basically run through most of your features right so you see that you have all the three of them two of them or sometimes just one of them which um is not mostly the case but if that feature just require one of these layers right to just create that layer so in the previous video i explained what these folders does and what they are um what we have to put there this kind of stuff so you can check my previous video as i said to know more about them so basically if you're going to build a to-do app you must have the front end part of the to-do app that's what the user will see um the buttons the ui all those logic and code are going to go into the presentation layer now how you save the to-do right how you save the to-do whether you are saving it to firebase your own database custom backend um you are saving it to locally all those um stuffs are going to be in your data now the logic for creating the to-do um editing adding deleting whatever you want to do is going to be in the domain so if you understand these um folders in um how i've explained it as in their functionality then you are good to go right so if you think of um my to do the pages i'm going to have um, the widget i'm going to have anything i'm going to have that is going to be in the presentation layer right basically when you are starting a feature um, i don't recommend you start from the presentation if you're a beginner but it doesn't really matter you can start from anywhere and you can join still join them together so we are going to start from the domain and the domain will also contain some other subfolders so in the domain we are going to have something we call entities and we are going to have something we call repositories and with still within the domain we are going to have um another thing we call use cases right now in the domain we have three subfolders and we are going to start from the entities so the entities are just like your models right? so if you have done some kind of flutter program before you know models which are just like classes for um, whatever you want to do right so in our entities we are going to have just one model which is the to do model right so this can be like a user uh, cut item um, ticket it doesn't really matter it's just describing what a particular um, model is so i'm going to create to do that, that and this is going to be um, the structure of a to do and it's going to be a class so i'm going to create a class which is to do and this is how we describe um, what your model should look like right so in a to do app i have entities right which are like in other sense models and they are classes and those classes contains um variables or let's say um items right in variables all right so let's say variables and then i'll be using those models um to communicate with my database domain all those kind of stuff you get it so in the to do i want to have an id for every to do so this is just like a schema for a to do i also want to have a text for every to do and i want to have a description as well All right so if i create this to string so this um let's say the schema for a to do app or the schema for a to do a single to do now let me generate the constructor for this and this becomes our entity so imagine if you are building an authentication layer or authentication feature in your app in the entities you are going to have a user right so that is going to describe your user 
a schema for a user so in this um variables of the class right um you can have an id username um age whatever data you want to take from the user or whatever data that describes a particular user you're going to have it in your entities now um that's for the entity so the entities will contain um, models for that particular feature and not models for any other feature now in the repositories um that's in the repositories directory or folder we're going to create the to do repository file and this file is um, the file in which you describe all the features of that particular um, to do so let's say you have um, a cat system in an e-commerce um, app right um, the features of that cat system will be the ability to add items to cart, delete items maybe bookmark items uh, or share the item in the cards like any other feature that's specific to that particular feature right or any other operation i think the word operation will look good here so any other operation or thing you can perform on that particular feature is what goes in the repository yeah so there is normally an abstract class right and it's going to define what you want that particular feature to contain right so this is how we do it first create an abstract class right and you call it um normally the same name as you save the file so to do repository right and this is going to contain something you call contracts so contracts are methods or um, functionalities that um, define what you want that particular feature to do so first <coughs> One contract is we want to be able to add the to do. We want to be able to edit the to do. We want to delete, and then we want to get our to dos. Right. So this our um these are the methods we want to be able to perform or the operations we want to be able to perform on the to do feature. So if it is a cart system, um, we would want to add items to cart um, delete item and empty the whole cart right so those kind of things but with the repository in the domain right so in the domain the repository here we don't actually um, write the function for doing that we just define um, what we want to do right so for instance add to do we are going to have a function called add to do and in this case we are defining the signature of that particular function so something like future to do add and then it takes in a to do right so in a to do repository we want to be able to add a to do it's a it's a method now that method takes in a to do which is um, of type to do and then it's an asynchronous function then returns that particular to do we pass in right. so you realize we are not actually writing the implementation of adding a to do we are defining um contract what we want our feature to do now when it comes to editing a to do it gets similar right so it's a future because editing um is something we can't um tell when we are going to done so maybe if it's an asynchronous operation calling a database or anything like that that's why i'm making the return type a future right so future to do and the same for delete right so and getting all the to do's is going to be a future but then a list of all to do's and then get or get all and we don't pass in anything because when we call get to do we want to get return all our to do's and we don't have to pass in any to do or whatever 
now depending on your implementation you may just pass in the id right you may not pass in the whole to do if you want to edit a single to do you may just pass in the id and then um, look for that to do with the id and then edit it right or you may just pass in um, an id right or anything that you want to pass in. it doesn't really matter it depends on how you want to implement your function for this um, particular operations now um, after defining these um, methods right which are contracts that's what we want the feature to be about it's left with the implementation so how do we implement this so that's when we come to the data layer and we create another folder called repositories right another folder called database or data sources it doesn't really matter how you create your how you name your folders right so but like we have another we have repository in the data and we have a repository in the domain now the repository in the domain defines what you want to do and the repository in the data actually does what's wanted to do right so in the repositories of the data we're going to have to do repository implementation right so impl dot that and this is going to be a class we are called to do repository implementation which implements which implements our to do repository and if i do that i'll be asked to create some overrides so let me create for this right right so realize this is where we are actually adding the to do right? this is where we are deleting we are editing and we are getting our to do's and this must be asynchronous because they are all future so all this must be asynchronous so this is where you write the actual functions for adding the to do editing deleting and whatever you want to do forgetting but you realize that when it comes to adding a to do you may be um, making an api call to a database firebase whatsoever right and you don't want to um, couple your firebase or your database logic to the actual implementation of adding a to do so that's when we have the database folder within our data right so this is where we define all the methods which actually communicate with your database so if it is firebase you define your adding something to firebase right so you define a function like add to do um add um anything to firebase which does the firebase firestore dot instance dot collection the name of the collection and then it adds that particular item to the firebase collection or any um database you are using right then you call those functions here and then you return the to do or whatever is going to um that um, database operation is going to return so let's take a look at that but this video i don't want to make this video very long because this is going to be a series right where i'll take my time and implement everything from scratch so um we will pause here for now and in the next video we will look at how to actually um call our database and in the case and in our case we're using firebase so we look at how to call firebase how to structure our database layer right how to return um our to do and how to even handle errors so in the next video realize we would have to change our um return type a bit to something like either a failure or a to do because we'll be handling errors as well but for now this is the structure of how uh, you implement a feature in kin architecture right um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up and comment as well if there's something you don't understand and i will attend to you so thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next one